Good evening and welcome back. Last week we saw that God speaks to us. God wants to speak to us. And we saw how he speaks through creation, how we can see his power and his glory and his majesty through the world around us. But we also saw how he speaks through the Bible, his word, and how he reveals himself to us through that. This week we're going to think a bit more about the Bible. And we're going to think of it being a bit of an adventure. You see, I don't have ever thought that reading the Bible is a bit like going on an adventure. We open this book and we'll be changed. We'll discover so much about the awesome, incredible, loving God who cares for us and wants us to have an incredible, joyful future with him forever. So are you ready to explore with me what the Bible says? and what it does. Well, to do that, we're going to do it from Psalm 19. It's a psalm that was written by David, a king of the Old Testament. Uh, he had a brilliant uh, life in lots of ways. He had money, he had wealth, he had power. And he had it all going for him. And we're going to see how he views the Bible. So he says this in verse 7 of Psalm 19. He says, The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. So what does God's word do? Well, it refreshes the soul. Imagine you've been out running all afternoon, the sun's blazing, you're sweating, it is dripping off you, you are absolutely exhausted. When you thought you couldn't go any further, you went that bit further still. And you get home and you're feeling absolutely shattered. All you want to do is collapse in a big heap. And then someone passes you an ice cold water bottle. It's got refreshing water in it. You desperately need to drink. You take a drink. And what's it do? It refreshes you. Immediately you feel better. You feel refreshed. It gives you that hydration that you desperately need. And you feel so good after just one water bottle. Well that's what the Bible does. It refreshes our soul. We might feel downcast or hurt or alone or burdened. But the Bible shows us an amazing God and how knowing him and being part of his family refreshes our soul. It lifts us up from the deepest pit we can be in. Well how does it do that? I'm not sure if you saw in verse 7. It says the law of the Lord is perfect. God's word is perfect. It's certain. It's true. When we read God's word, we see God's amazing truth. We see it's far better than any truth we might come up with about this world and this life. But the psalm doesn't stop there. It goes on further. So let me read the next part of the verse. It says, the statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Now you see, I struggle with trying to build anything from instructions. Partly because I tried to not follow the instructions, partly because I tried to follow the instructions and then it all goes pear-shaped somehow. So, there are at least two occasions where I have tried to build a wardrobe and it's gone slightly wrong. On one occasion, I managed to get the wardrobe back to front. Which is okay, a bit of tape over the front you wouldn't notice. On another occasion, it was a wardrobe, and I managed to put a shelf on upside down. Now, you might not think that's an issue, but from the shelf you had to hang your clothes. And so the holes to hang the clothes from were pointing upwards and not downwards, which is a slight problem. Instructions can look really complicated. Take these for example. These are instructions for my daughter's play kitchen. You might think these look nice and simple. They've got a nice picture of the pieces. They go through step by step what happens. Be assured, if I tried to follow these, somewhere it would go wrong. But thankfully, I've got a wife who is brilliant at reading instructions, taking what they say and interpreting them. I am simple and do not understand the instructions when it comes to it. But my wife makes me wise by instructing me and guiding me in what to do. 
This is what the Bible does. It instructs us and guides us. It shows us how to live. It shows us how to be part of God's family. It shows us who God is and how we can relate to him and how we need his rescue, how we need his salvation and the joy he gives to us. It's the true wisdom, not the false wisdom the world sometimes shows us. It's the true wisdom in knowing what life is really about and in how to live life properly. It makes us wise, able to live how we were created. But there's one more bit that I'd like to read from Psalm 19. And it says this, it's verse 10. It says, They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. Let me read that again. This is talking about God's word and God's commands. They are much more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. You see, to have God speaking to us, showing us who he is, who we are, and how we can have life. Well, that's to be desired more than an absolute bucket load of gold. It's sweeter to us than the finest tasting food, than the finest honey you can find. It's sweeter than that. This is something that David is writing. That someone who would be a king, who knew power, who knew wealth, who knew luxurious food, he desired God's word more than any of those. King David knew how special and precious God's word was. He was powerful, mighty, wealthy, but most of all he desired God and he desired God's word. God's word is perfect. It is completely true and certain. It refreshes our soul. God's word makes wise and simple. It shows us how to live properly and rightly. God's word gives true wisdom. God's word is precious and sweet. It is more worthwhile. It is more valuable than anything. Do we desire it? Do we desire to spend time in God's word? Hearing from God himself? Having God fill us with more riches than we can imagine? To give us more joy than we can ever imagine? That's what God's word does. That's why we spend time in it. That's why we should want to read it for ourselves. And that's the challenge I give to you this week. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your word, thank you for the Bible, thank you for giving it to us to reveal who you are. Thank you that it is perfect. Thank you it makes wise the simple. Thank you that it refreshes the soul. Thank you that it is more precious than gold and sweeter than honey. We pray that if we don't really, you'd help us to show us more and more how true these are. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again at the same time next week.